What is going on guys? Welcome to another episode. And in this episode, I will give you guys my review of the Triumph Street Triple RS and how it handles on the track. So we got a lot to talk about. Let's get on the road. So you guys have been asking for this performance review for a long time. Hopefully it serves a purpose in you deciding if you want to purchase this motorcycle or not. Or if you kind of want to live through my eyes, see how I experience the motorcycle. Well, there you have it. Today is going to be your day. So uh, with that being said, I have released two videos so far and they're kind of like a teaser videos. The first one was for Chuckwalla and I think that was just like my best lap video. I did a 212 with this motorcycle. Now that I have a little bit more experience with the track, if I go back, I think I could shave off another couple of seconds off of that. So if I can get somewhere around 208, I'd be pretty happy with it. Considering I did 206 with my R6, I think I can pull off a 208, if not a 209 with this, only because of the aero. And that's something that we're definitely going to be talking about as we progress on this review. And then uh, I took it to Auto Club Speedway, and Auto Club Speedway is a huge track. Auto Club Speedway is actually a NASCAR oval, and they take a portion of the track and they make it into a circuit for cars and motorcycles. It's a pretty iconic track. If you're a big fan of NASCAR, you may or may not have seen it in some of the races. First and foremost, on the street, this thing is an absolute blast to ride. I don't want to use terms that uh, KTM has used, calling it a scalpel, but it is a surgical tool on the street. It is even more a surgical tool on the track because the low end torque on this motorcycle is absolutely ferocious. I'm not exactly sure what the RPM limit is on this motorcycle, but looking down on the TFT screen, I can see that it goes way past uh, 12,000 RPM. So it's gotta be somewhere around 12, 13,000 RPM. But surprisingly, it doesn't get there very quickly. Just recently, I rode my friend's uh, Ducati 959 because I got into a huge accident with that motorcycle and then I sold it to my friend. And the first gear on that V-Twin is so short. But uh, I think uh, the higher the displacement, the shorter the gears feel. I don't know, I'm not an expert in that department, but just from observation. <laughs> The motorcycle has uh, nearly 3,000 miles on the odometer. Let me see if I can cycle through and give you guys an exact odometer reading. Oh, actually, you know what? Yeah, 3,078 miles. All right. So on 3,078 miles, I've become very comfortable with this motorcycle. I launch it pretty hard and uh, it is just a thrill to ride. Performance-wise, uh, I, I don't know what it does 0 to 60, but I remember my old F900R, which weighs a lot more than this, has a lot less horsepower than this, did 0 to 60 in 3.4 seconds. So I'm thinking this does 0 to 60 somewhere around 3.1 to 3.1, 3.2 seconds, maybe even flat 3 seconds. But anyways, guys, this thing on the track is an absolute monster. This motorcycle is meant more for a small to mid-sized track. It is not meant for a big track that has very long straights. There's two reasons for that. Number one, it's a naked motorcycle. And a naked motorcycle doesn't have good aerodynamics like a sport bike would. This motorcycle's happy spot is getting off the line, reaching 120 miles an hour is where its sweet spots are. In the 600, 700 class ranges, you'd find it really difficult to find another motorcycle that can match up to the acceleration of the Shri Triple RS. Don't let the 765cc motor deter you because uh, it might be 765, but this thing pulls like an engine that's way bigger than it. What I especially like about the triple engine is that the triple engine sounds absolutely ferocious. The first time I took it to Chukwala, I didn't have an exhaust to the motorcycle. But the second time I went to the track with, at uh, Auto Club Speedway, I had the spark exhaust on this thing and uh, it just sounds so freaking amazing, man. The spark exhaust was perfect for the track and that's the exhaust that I would choose if I were to track this motorcycle on a consistent basis. I think the top speed on this motorcycle is under 150 miles an hour. And if my memory serves me correctly, I took it all the way up to 147 miles an hour, but anywhere between 120 to its top speed, it's kind of sluggish it does, and it gets there pretty slowly. 
Uh, I was getting passed by 600 class motorcycles. And once again, I just want to put this out there, it all has to do with the aero. I think if you had aero on this motorcycle or the Daytona, because that's where this motorcycle came from, then it would get there a lot faster. But as a result of the wind resistance, you don't get there as quickly. But uh, passing power at higher RPMs or lower RPMs is not something that this motorcycle has any issues with. I was passing uh, bikes that were a lot more powerful than this and bikes that were comparable as well. And I think there was even uh, a Triumph Daytona Moto2, the brand new 2020 model that has the carbon fairings and everything, which is basically its older brother. That bike was also on the track. I wish I met the guy and swapped bikes with him to see what it was like, but I didn't get to meet him. But anyways, uh, there was that bike there. It was a lot of nice bikes and it was a fun day with the motorcycle. So a couple of things I didn't like about the motorcycle on the track. No matter what I did, I couldn't get rid of the traction control. But unfortunately, I don't want to turn that off because it is kind of a safety net. But in most motorcycles, you have a level one through whatever, right? But in this motorcycle, you have a low, medium, high, or whatever it is. It's got like three or four settings. And considering that there's so much electronics on this motorcycle, I just wish that Triumph had a better system where it gave you a little bit more options in terms of how much intrusion you wanted or not. In my situation, there was way too much intrusion and uh, I, I didn't want to turn it off, but at the same time, I wanted a little bit there, but there was no sweet spot, no medium where I could have just as much as I want. It was kind of like either it's on or either it's not. And I wasn't happy about that. Other than that, uh, the ABS was kicking in a lot. I also wish that this motorcycle had multiple levels of ABS. I think it's either on or off, <laughs> and that's all you get. And I think it should have different levels of ABS. I remember uh, I've had the Ducati 959 Corsa and the regular model, and I believe that has different levels of ABS. Uh, one, one, two, three, I think. And if this motorcycle had something like that, I, I, you know, it would have been a whole lot better. But considering that this is first and foremost a Daytona, and then a naked motorcycle for the street, you would think that Triumph would make it a little bit more user friendly on the track. But I guess uh, for the most part, people that buy this motorcycle are not gonna take this thing on the track or make it a dedicated track bike. Well, I hope not. But uh, the people who are interested in getting this bike are primarily gonna take it on the street and then once in a while, take it on the track as well, like I did. Now, I definitely will take it to the track in the future, but my decision for taking it to the track will definitely be to take it somewhere smaller. I don't think I'll ever take it to a track where top speeds are above 130 miles an hour. This is the perfect motorcycle for small and medium sized tracks, uh, but otherwise, stay away from the larger tracks. I think my neck was stiff for like a good two, three days after that. So a couple of other things I want to point out. The quick shifter on this thing is absolutely butter. Going up into the gears, it is ultra smooth. Going down into the gears, it rev matches for you into the appropriate RPM range. And man, it sounds so good when it rev matches. So let's head in here and summarize everything we talked about so far. And I'll give you guys my final conclusion on what I think about the Shri Triple RS on the track. What a gorgeous day. Check this out. Alright guys, to summarize what I think about the Triumph Street Triple RS on the track, plenty of power on the big Brembo brakes, stopping power is perfect, acceleration as I mentioned from 0 to 120, this thing is an absolute cannon, a ballistic cannon, 765cc, plenty of torque, 
plenty of horsepower to get you there but after 120 to its top speed of 145 147 it does get kind of sluggish but that's to be expected because there's no air on this motorcycle otherwise uh, the quick shifter on this thing is absolute perfection there was one time where I had a false neutral but that was my fault because I didn't kick it up uh, fast enough or uh, with enough force but um, I'm not gonna blame that on the bike but otherwise, fantastic motorcycle for the track, but if you want my advice, just make sure it's a small to medium sized track. If it's a long track with long straights, you're not gonna like it and you're not gonna feel good a couple of days after you go home because you're gonna have a stiff neck like I did. So anyways guys, that's been pretty much it for this episode. So I will see you guys on the next episode. Keep the rubber side down. Ciao for now.